comparable to the earth science classroom looking at gravitational anomalies all right so today we're going to look at this video uh intro to gravity what is it who discovered it um the differences in gravity and why there are differences in gravity as as a you know small child you, you grow up knowing that gravity is kind of a consistent force um created by mass and you know, uh, you don't really get too much introduction to differences in, in gravity um, so much. And we're going to relate it to our Earth science. Then we're going to look at these anomalies, all right, and how uh, the different types of anomalies and also how these types are created and how we use them. So the functionality, why do we care? Why and how do we use them? How do we use these to our benefit? Okay, so guys, join us for the video. All right, so a little bit of physics and geophysics. Now, we all know the story of uh, Sir Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree, and the apple fell on his head, and he's like, whoa, what happened? You know, so kind of the uh, Newtonian physics kind of was born and uh, published in 1687 was his theory on gravity and gravitational attraction. Now, this uh, obviously in addition to the, the forces as well, uh, was kind of like a revolutionary idea and theory and part of science that we now know is just um, you know taught in most textbooks or textbooks around the world. So gravity is uh, nine point eight meters per second squared. It's acceleration. It is the speed at which things fall back to Earth. Now Earth is the center of of mass, and gravity and mass are twinned. Obviously, the Earth is so large compared to us that we are under the effect of gravity according to the Earth. Now, the Earth is obviously under the sun's gravitational pull, and there's gravity in terms of the moon and other aspects of the solar system and astronomy. But we know that this kind of is more consistent. However, if you change elevation, if you change your location on the Earth, this 9.8 meters per second becomes a more of a range. It's more of an average. So we can just more of an average. Okay. So why is this? Well, we have our beautiful planet and we have our tilt, which is roughly 23 and a half degrees. And also we are spinning. Okay, on the axis, and also we are orbiting the sun as well. Okay. Uh, so revolving and rotating at the same time and on a tilt. Now, the Earth's shape is not a perfect sphere. So nope, no sphere. It's actually an oblate sephiroid, which means that it is slightly not spherical, not perfect sphere. So it is actually wider around the equator than it is going uh, in terms of tall from north to South Pole. So the equator is actually 7,926 miles versus north to south is 7,900. So it's about a 26 mile or a 40 kilometer difference between uh, distances. So it's an oblate sephiroid. It's not perfect, so it's fatter and it is taller. This causes changes within the gravitational field or the strength it fluctuates based on where you are so in terms of latitude if you are closer to the poles you actually weigh more if you go take a trip down to ecuador on the equator you'd actually weigh less good weight loss program actually you'd weigh about 5.5 ounces less if you start at 100 pounds at the north pole you'd actually end up at 99.65 pounds in ecuador which is not bad not bad small change small change so let's look at the gravitational anomalies so they're based on the composition of what's in the crust lithosphere. So there's a general 
um, number, gravitational range that we expect, but there are differences around the crust, around the sphere, and it's based on what it's made of and the corresponding density. So an anomaly is something that sticks out that's different, something that's different that doesn't compare to the pattern or trend that you expect, and they can be like isolated areas of different gravity, um, gravity uh, data. So why do we care about this? Well, as we, 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 we use a gravimeter, which is an instrument, basically it's like an instrument that is a spring and a weighted kind of, uh, end, and it can basically, uh, the increased gravity on an area of the planet, this will go down, okay? So if we have the same thing, and there is slightly less gravity in an area, then, or less gravity, I'm going to put more, there we go, less gravity, this weighted end will not be going down, it'll actually either stay or go up based on the gravitational. So if you move this gravimeter across the crust, you'll have very small changes in this gravimeter. It'll, it'll basically show the different um, strengths of gravity based on different areas of the planet. Now, why do we care about this? Well, because you know, humans like to use uh, raw materials from the Earth's surface, and each type of, of resource, or let's say ore, let's say, for example, the fossil fuels that we consume at a horrible rate around the whole world, is they have different densities. And rather than digging a huge hole, it's just easier to remote sense and look at these gravitational anomalies across the crust and take out from those what we think is causing those anomalies to exist. Now, generally, within a, um, a crust, you can find deposits of uh, increased density materials like iron, like um, uh, various coal and coal deposits, for example, and we could, without having to dig down there, we know it's down there. So we can do various uh, seismic um, uh, investigations around the uh, around the planet and find these raw materials without having to dig all the time and dig everything up. Kind of an awesome thing. And the fossil fuel industry has taken this and obviously made it extremely accurate and extremely detailed in order to find all the deposits to to extract. So. This gravimeter will show different anomalies, and the types are negative and positive. So negative, you're going to see that there's less pull on the Earth, there's less uh, gravitational pull from various materials So let's say you have uh, an area of igneous, then goes to sedimentary. Sedimentary has less dense material. The density is, is less, so it'll be a less, um, we'll have a less pull on that gravimeter, and it would show a negative um, anomaly. Compared to igneous or various different iron deposits, this would have more mass, therefore, you'd have a uh, more gravitational pull, more acting upon it. So there's more or less negative and positive anomalies. And we can use these to uh, expose hidden deposits underground. We can also um, use this with a plumb line and surveying any kind of construction underground, tunnel construction, subways, foundations, uh, also, in terms of earthquakes, in terms of the bedrock and cementology, how to react to earthquake waves. So the plumb line is going to basically show you um, under mountains, like with Himalayas in the 1800s, with Aryan Pratt, uh, they looked at the um, 
the error that would be expected next to a larger mass um, mountain range versus a smaller plains and thinner crust, that you expect a, um, a range of gravity. And this led them to their theories of one hand the root, one hand different, different densities across the crust, and both of them were correct, and we can see this with the anomalies, the, uh, the effect of different densities in the Earth's crust on the pull of gravity, and the gravimeter can record this. All right? So, guys, I hope this helped this video, um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.